boys and girls, ladies and squirrels, my name is Evan McGuffey, and y'all are going to get learned today. Raise your hand if you have one Medicare client on the books. Raise your hand if you have a uh, hundred or more Medicare clients on the books. Hi. No, no, no. Hi, hello. But hi. I need to see. Okay. Chad, you don't have a hundred? 200. Who has at least 200? I just want to get a feel for the room, what I'm talking to. 300. 500. 1,000. All right, Louise. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I'm going to All right. All right. So I'm going to show you guys how I wrote 600 plans in my first 12 months doing Medicare. Now, to be fair, I've only been doing it for 50 weeks because my one-year anniversary is on September 29th. What? No, that's 51 weeks. Okay. So that's coming up next year. How to write 600 Medicare clients in one year or whatever your goal is. Not everybody wants to do that. Not everybody wants to work that hard or sacrifice to do the things that they don't want that much money, whatever your goal is. But I'm going to give you the framework for how I did it, and you can juxtapose that onto you. It's a pretty good word. All right, what I'm going to cover today, why? We're going to talk about goal setting. We're going to talk about leads, appointments, schedule, in-home sale. And then I'm answering any questions at the end. If you have something that's super, super pertinent, and you think it's a really good question that would benefit the whole group, you can interrupt me by raising your hand. But otherwise, save it for the end. Thank you. All right. The anchor to everything that you're going to do is your why. Why write 600 clients in a year? The first thing is so that you can do what you really, really like to do without having to think about the money. I'm not in this for Medicare, and um, I have other stuff that, I'm gonna, that I like to do, and I'm going to talk about that. So it has to hit your higher purpose, but it also has to hit your lower purpose. You want to stroke your ego. There's nothing wrong with that. And when you set a goal and you talk about your why, it's got to hit both. You're not beneath it. Everybody's got an ego, and you want to feel good when you hit a goal, and you want to feel good about working. So what I really like to do is introduce young adults to meditation. And fortunately, I'm able to do that because I got a fat stack of cash, and I don't have to think about you know traveling to this high school, this university, doing, setting up my website. This is what I like to do, and I'm able to do it with a degree of freedom because of the work and time that I put in with Medicare. That's my higher purpose. Stroke my ego. I like fast cars and hot women. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. All right, you have my permission to stroke your ego however you want. And that car on the left is my car. I happened to buy it this year and it felt fantastic. All right, so if we talk about 100 clients, I like to think of it monthly, 25 bucks per person that's on the books. You got 100 clients, that's $2,500 a month coming in. 400 clients is 10,000, 600 clients, 15, 1,000 clients or more like Luis, you got 25K rolling in a month before you roll out of bed that morning. It's pretty good. Jim, how many clients do you have on the books? Zero. Yeah. How many are you gonna put on the next 12 months? Thousand. Okay, we'll, we'll, swif, we'll swap seats next year. Let's see who else. Cliff, how many are you gonna write in the next 12 months? Probably 300. Rick? 100, 100, 300, I don't know, okay. Teach their own. So just think about it, all right? Thousand dollars a month for a Tesla. Right, this is very similar to the one that I bought, and I just bought it off a whim. That's only 40 clients, okay? When you think about your why, it could be cool stuff like this. 40 clients, how long is it gonna take you to get to 40 clients? It's gonna cover your monthly payment, then you don't have to think about the car. If you're like Robert Kiyosaki, you're acquiring an asset that's gonna pay off your bad debt, right? You acquire some clients to pay off the stuff that you really like. Can you get 40 clients in two weeks? Will it take you two months? It's a good deal either way. Here in Dallas, I went on Zillow and I looked at some really nice houses, not because I'm thinking of moving, but because I know you guys 
are down here and uh, everybody likes nice houses. So, million dollar house, that's six grand a month. Let's just call it 6,500 a month with insurance and all that, utilities. That's 260 clients. A lot of you, I know, can do that in six months. You can put 260 clients on the books and you'll cover your monthly payment on a million dollar house. Maintain your book and you're good to go. Think about what's possible, think big. So, 600 clients, it's about 60 clients a month. Some are gonna fall off, I know that, I'm not perfect. Let's just say a 10% attrition rate. That's 15 uh, uh, policies a week, or 15 sales a week. That's like two to three per day. You're working five or six days a week. Let's talk about leads. Get on the 360 lead program. 75 bucks per policy bonus, okay? And it doesn't matter what part of the year you are in when you sell that policy. The effective date does not matter. You can do, well, I recommend Need a Lead, NAL, or Insurance Marketing Hub. Those are my two favorites. And the type of lead, direct mail. Direct mail is king, it's the highest intent. When you show somebody their handwriting, it's hard for them to shut the door on you. So let's go over some stats and we're gonna talk about money, finances, cash flow. My close ratio right now is about 35% of all leads. So I know that if I get 50 leads, I'm, even if it's a bad week, I'm gonna close 15 of them, right? So Insurance Marketing Hub, oh by the way, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a link to this PowerPoint and you'll be able to uh, get it afterwards so you don't have to write everything down. But there's a guy named Eric Larson at Insurance Marketing Hub. The thing that I like about Insurance Marketing Hub is that with Eric, you can sign yourself up for recurring, uh, automatic recurring drops. And I'll talk about what a drop is, but it's recurring mail. So you say, hey Eric, I wanna do two drops per week. You put your bank account on file and they automatically bill you and you don't have to think, remember, or go through the procrastination of buying more leads. And that's what I find fantastic about it. I just wanna set it and forget it. His cell phone, email, and that's a link to schedule a time with him. So, what is a mail drop? A mail drop is when you drop a thousand pieces of mail. By drop, we just mean you mail the mail. But we call it drop so that we don't use the verb and the word over, over and again. So one mail drop is about 450 bucks. And you're gonna get, depending on where you're at, 10 to 25 leads back. In Dallas, you're gonna get less. Uh, the more urban environments, are more competitive, people are getting mail, and they're not as likely to fill them out. So with a thousand pieces of mail, in Dallas it's gonna be on the lower hand. It's gonna be around 10. Now if you go outside Dallas, into the greater area here, into rural areas, those are my favorite, rural, where people have an acre or two of property, you're gonna get a higher response rate. Oh, what's up Kenny, how you doing dude? You snuck in here, okay. So. Uh, you're gonna get more leads back. The cost per lead's gonna be uh, less. And those people are getting hit, hit up uh, less. So with my 600, uh, my 600 sales per year, I would usually drive about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Nashville for all my clients. In Nashville, it's tougher. Outside Nashville, in the next county, or if I go up to Kentucky, that's the gold mine. It's very rural areas where uh, people aren't getting hit up as much by agents. They're not paying attention to all the advertisements. There's not as many billboards, everything like that. Rural versus urban, okay. So me, what I would do, three mail drops per week, all right? That's 12 mail drops per month. I'm getting anywhere from a range of 30 to 75 leads per week. That's 120 to 300 leads per month, all right? As long as you guys set up a proper lead system for yourself, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna hit your goals. The hardest thing is setting up the system. And if you have automatic drops happening, well, Insurance Marketing Hub charged me 500 bucks, charged me $1,000, I better go out and work these leads. I have no choice. I would spend around $1,350, $1,350 uh, per week which was 5,400 per month, okay? Now here's where the cool part happens. 
we get reimbursed $75 per sale, all right? If you do the math, just kidding, I already did it for you, but 20 sales per week is your break-even point, is my break-even point. So if I'm spending $1,350 uh, $1, per week on leads and my reimbursement is $1,500, I didn't have any cost of goods sold, right? Everything on top of that is just cake. But wait, there's more. Right? Billy Mays OxyClean. Uh, they just started the $40 Sunfire bonus. And we have HRAs, which we'll do at the end of most sales. That's 50 bucks. That's an extra $90 per sale. 75 plus 90 is $165 bonus on each sale. B-O-N-U-S. True break-even point is actually 15 policies per week. 20 policies, you're hustling. 10 policies, you can roll out of bed and do that. It's only two a day. With so many leads, you're gonna be doing fantastic. Now the reason that I'm talking about just this bonus money is because this is not even counting normal commissions. The reason I'm saying that is because commissions change throughout the year. We all know it's a little complicated. You sell somebody in March, you get paid April through the rest of the year. You sell somebody in August, you're only making like, well, so like 75, 80 bucks if you sell somebody in August because you get paid September, October, November, December. So commissions vary and it's harder to determine uh, cash flow that way. But 10 policies a week and you're getting 50 leads in, you're gonna be, you're gonna be golden. Anybody can sell 10, pol 10 policies from 50 leads. Oh my God. Anybody can sell 10 policies from 50 leads. So the way that I look at it, is that there's not really a lead cost. It's just a matter of how much you wanna work and how much money you wanna make and how much time you have. That's it. You guys gotta start thinking big. You're worth it. Let's talk about schedule. So the way that I look at this schedule, I'm gonna begin on the weekend. The weekend, I have four things to do. The first three things on this list should take me, if I'm focused and I don't get distracted, 30 minutes. I'm gonna send my leads to Janae. I'm gonna talk about Janae in a second. I'm gonna print my leads. I'm gonna organize them, organize them by zip code. So I just pull them um, zip code, zip code, zip code, zip code. I have a zip code map so I know where they all are pertaining to that county. I put some paper clips on them, throw them in a folder, I'm good to go. The fourth one is chill. Okay? When you work hard, you gotta play hard. And play hard doesn't mean going and gamble and going to the club. It just means getting really good sleep, enjoying some quality time with your family. And when you're off, you're off. When you're on, I can't swear in here. It's freaking time to go, all right? So make sure you chill, because it makes everything worth it. The biggest thing for me, my father used to work 24 seven. My mom as well, my mom was a breadwinner in the house that I grew up with, grew up in. And all the time, they would work from home and just be working 24 seven. And so when I was looking at them, I was like, listen, I'm gonna work so hard on my day job that when I come home, laptop is in the other room, all my, brief, my briefcase is on the floor. I don't, I can't swear, but I, I don't care. I really don't care. When you're off, you're off. When you're on, you're on, it's time to perform. My appointment setter's name is Janae, and you guys, have my permission to contact her, and you have her permission to contact her, okay? She's awesome. Her email is setbyjanae at gmail. Tell her that I sent you. Uh, that's her phone number there as well. I would recommend just hitting her up by gmail so she doesn't get a lot of phone calls and texts from unknown people. She costs $12 per appointment, and on direct mail, on direct mail, she sets about 50% of all the leads that you give her, which is super, super good. I've used many appointment setters in the past, and she's by far the best. By far the best. This is what it looks like uh, with Janae. So I'll send Janae my appointments, I'm sorry, I'll send Janae my leads on a Sunday. She might dial on Sunday, she may not, depends on her schedule as well. But all of a sudden I look at my phone on Google Calendar and I got all of these appointments going on. And you can tell her, you know, 
start at 10, start at 11, finish up in the evening. You guys can see that I get started a little bit late. Most of my appointments start at maybe 10, 11 in the morning, but I go late. I go to like 7, 8, sometimes 9 o'clock at night. So I'm getting home at like 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock after the gym. So I was running about 15 to 25 appointments per week. That's three to six per day. I like to door knock. Now, door knocking is not canvassing. Canvassing is just knocking on random doors, kind of like calling numbers in a phone book. Not compliant. If you guys have a lead in your hand and you go up to a door with a printed lead and you start talking about what they filled out, totally fine. It's a perfect way to fill in the gaps. And it's a lot of fun. It's honestly a lot of fun. I think I have a slide about it. Okay, I have a slide about it later. So my schedule. Janae might dial on a Sunday, and I might have appointments for Monday. If I don't, then I'm just doing office work. If I do have appointments, then I fit them in. Tuesday, appointments and door knock in between. Wednesday, appointments and door knock in between. Thursday, Friday, same thing. Saturday, what do we do? What's the fourth thing? What do we do? Chill. And maybe a little Netflix, too, if you're lucky. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like to share my morning routine. My morning routine every single gosh darn day is I meditate. You don't have to meditate as long as I do. Just do it for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. It's going to set you up. Everybody in the world is going to like you better because of it. And there's a wonderful website and also mobile app called Headspace. And I've been using that every single day, mark my words, every single day, except for one day that I had food poisoning in, in March, every single day for the past nine years. Greatest thing I've ever done for myself. I write down three things. Well, I write more than three things, but what I recommend for you guys, write down three things that you're thankful for. It doesn't have to be elaborate. Don't judge yourself on it. Just write them down, and you're going to get high. That's how you get naturally high, is you write down what you're thankful for, and just look at yourself in the mirror. You can look yourself in the mirror for a minute. You can look yourself in the mirror for a second. Just look at yourself in the mirror. Make some good eye contact. 12-minute morning routine. It's not like one of those one, two-hour things where you have to really dedicate the first part of your day to it. Very easy, it's gonna set you up for success. People are gonna love you because of it. In-home sales. All right, when I walk into an appointment, I have the following. I have a uniform. Oh, I didn't put a photo of my uniform. I wear the same thing every day. Kind of like Steve Jobs, I wear the same darn thing every day. It's a turquoise polo shirt with white horizontal stripes and blue pants. Same belt, very similar shoes every single day. Why? I don't want to think about what, I want, what I'm going to wear when I wake up. I got 99 problems, and figuring out what the hell I'm going to wear that day is not one of them. All right? I don't want to think. I just want to get in my car, and because I have a Tesla, I was going to say turn the key. I just stomp on the gas, and it just goes. Uh, I have my lead in hand when I show up at an appointment. Have it printed out, have it in your hand. Some people like iPads, whatever, potato, potato. I like having it in my hand, just so I can show them immediately if they have any questions. Briefcase, look nice and professional. I was brought up and trained to have a backpack with me, and I said, F that, I'm just gonna do a briefcase. Looks really classy, makes me feel really good. When you feel good, you play good. When you play good, you win. iPad with pen and keyboard. If you don't have a touch screen, uh, you're losing. And if you don't have a pen on your touch screen, you're also losing because you don't want to confine them to only writing with their finger. Their handwriting is already terrible enough. Give them a freaking pen. They know how to use that. Keyboard, if you're just typing on the iPad or whatever pad, tablet thing, that's annoying. All right, paper copies of everything. If I'm out in a rural area, sometimes I don't have internet. If I didn't charge my iPad the night before, I don't have an iPad. Right? So I got paper copies of everything, scope of appointment, uh, obviously the leads, and then I have enrollment kits, any supplies, everything, paper copy. Permission to contact, all the forms. Folders, summary of benefits for popular plans, so have your enrollment kits for the most popular plans, and then you can have uh, a big store of them in your trunk. And a summary sheet, I'm gonna go over the summary sheet in a second, but it's just the highlights so that they have something that's really easy to refer to, and they can call me less. Okay, so Chad's entire presentation, and he did a fantastic top, topic, was going deep on in-home. But this is the structure, all right? 
First things first, you gotta frame the appointment. You gotta understand why you're there. So, Cliff, the reason here that I'm here today is because you had filled out this postcard in the mail. You remember doing that? I did. Okay. Cliff, most people fill out this postcard just because they want to see if they qualify for extra money back with Medicare, making sure that they're taking advantage of all the benefits that they're eligible for. Does that best describe you as well? Exactly. 100%. Cool. You have your Medicare card on you? I do. Okay. Boom. So that's one and two. I just transitioned into two real quick. But the way that I open it allows them to tell me what's going on without me prying too hard and allows them to speak up about anything that they don't like or anything that they're looking for, okay? Depending on how the energy's flowing or depending on how I'm feeling that day, sometimes I'll throw in, yeah, you wanna make sure that you're getting the full dental benefit. You wanna get the full hearing benefit, right? <laughs> if I walk in there and I'm like, hey, Cliff, you know, I have to yell, hey, Cliff, or if Cliff's got sh bad teeth, then I'm like, oh, it might be dental, I don't know. Wink, wink. <laughs> You want a Listerine gum or something? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so I might mention something and I have fun with it. So that's where you understand why you're there and you get that little pain point. Current plan and uh, Medicaid. So you have the Medicare card, log into their Medicare account, look and see exactly what plan that they have. And like Chad, and this is just a coincidence that we both do it this way, but neither one of us care what plan they have right now. I mean, we do care, but we're not gonna ask them for their card and we're not gonna ask them what plan they have. Part of the reason is, yeah, you don't wanna seem like a telemarketer, but also half the time, they don't even know what plan they have because they pull out five cards and I have to sift through them and then I'm gonna go and look on, on medicare.gov anyway. So I gotta see what their current plan is. I gotta see if they got Medicaid, see if they have any other health coverage through the VA. They could have an employer or a union or a state or government municipality, some sort of um, plan through them. So I gotta see exactly what they got going on. And if they do have Medicaid, I gotta see what level they, did, they have. Is it SLMB, which is partial? Is it QMB, which is full? And you guys uh, got to know the difference between those and how DSNPs work. Doctors and meds. So, Jim, Jim, you got any med medications that are really expensive? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You take an insulin, or you got a big inhaler. 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 Okay. And then I'm going to be looking at all their medications on their Medicare.gov profile. You can see all their recently filled medications, and I like to double check that. It looks pretty cool, Jim, when I'm on my iPad and I'm like, oh, you got Bread Street, right? And you're like, yeah, how'd you know? And I'm like, hey, you're taking Lantus Solastar, Lantus, right, for your insulin. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, you know, I'm the shit, so, you know, I, could, I know all your medications. No, it's a really good uh, posturing. And you need to have it, because if they don't know all their stuff and they don't have their pill bottles in front of them, you have a really solid list of the medications. Doctors, Jim, you seen any uh, specialists lately? Yeah. Okay. Name. What's your primary care doctor's name? Joe Hanson. Write it down. Okay. Make sure that, uh, obviously, make sure that they're in network for both meds and doctors. Meds are in the formulary. All right? Number five, new agents. Number five. New agents, you gotta rem remember number five. Five golden rings. Okay, number five, choose a lever. Now the way you wanna choose a lever is kinda like how Schwarzenegger said, get to the chopper, you have to choose the lever. You have to know your plans and you have to choose a lever. What I mean by that is there's gonna be one pain point that you are going to pull the lever on whether it be specialist copay. They don't like paying $40, and there's a plan in your area where the specialist copay is $5. That's what you're gonna lean on. That's gonna be the selling point. They have something where they don't like the dental benefit. You're gonna lean on that. This plan has better dental. Network, this doctor isn't a network. Okay, you're gonna lean on a new plan that's got the doctor network. There's another plan that has a Part B reduction. Basically gives them cash back every month. You're gonna lean on that. You get extra 50 bucks with well care give back or well care dividend. Lean on that. There's gonna be something. So, that is all mental. You don't have to say anything for choosing a lever. Scope them, all right? Jim, I got something that you're really gonna like. 
Do you know what a scope of appointment is? No. Okay. It's a permission for me to talk to you about Medicare Advantage, specifically a plan. By law, we have to do this. It's a regulation. All I need is your signature here saying it's okay for me to talk to you about a Medicare Advantage Part C plan. Boom. Okay. And then right after they sign that, I pitch. Pitching is going over and it's expressing verbally the lever. So pulling on that. Jim, right now you got a plan. It's only got $500 worth of dental. You're eligible for an upgrade and have $1,000, 50, whatever the specifics are. $2,000 worth of dental. It won't cost you anything extra. It's $0 a month, same that you're paying now. And I don't know, maybe it's with, still with Humana, it's still with United Healthcare. All right? And that's what you're going to lead on, and that's what you're going to pitch. And that's the benefit that you're going to bring to them. EAP, you write up the EAP, and then you wrap it up. <clears throat> Jim, we're getting married. We're going to tie the knot as client and agent. All right? So there's three things that I do to tie the knot, and this is going to help you guys a lot with retention. There's these little uh, slips that you get. They're like little plastic slips. This is a screenshot that I took yesterday on Amazon. And you put their card in that slip. Now that slip is big enough to fit two cards. What other card do you think you put in that slip? Your business card. That's right. Because if you didn't train your clients, training your clients is totally fine. If you didn't train your clients to not pick up the phone for, for a telesale, then they're going to pick up the phone for the telesale. The telesale agent is going to say, hey, uh, go get your red, white, and blue card. Well, when they get the red, white, and blue card, what's on the other side of it? Your card, my card, right? And they'll be like, oh, that's right. Evan told me to hang up on you, so, right? <laughs> And he was a really good looking guy, so I'm gonna to listen to him. All right, the other thing is, uh, it's really easy to do this when your client has an iPhone. It's not always the case, but I always share my contact with AirDrop so that they have my contact with my photo in there. If they don't have AirDrop, if they don't have an iPhone, then I send them a text message and I just take their phone, I'm like, hey Jim, you got your cell phone on you? Yep, okay, cool. Let me just save my number in your phone so you know it's me if I call you. Get the phone get my photo into their phone on that contact, put down my number, bada bing, bada boom. And sometimes I don't even write McGuffey. I'm, in a lot of people's phones, I'm just Evan Medicare. So if I call them, it's a picture, right? It's me and my name, but it's a picture. And then I'll call them right in front of them and be like, hey, if this isn't happening and they're talking about Medicare, it's not me, it's a bunch of BS. You got it, capiche? They're like, yeah, okay, cool. And the last thing that you can do is I'll be like, hey, Jim, you're getting a lot of spam calls? Yeah. 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 10 out of 10 times, it's like, oh, yeah. Silence unknown callers. That is a setting on the iPhone, and it will silence unknown callers. With Android, it's a bit more difficult, and it's not always the same. With iPhone, they all have this, and it's great. This is that little leave behind that I give them. I give them the, the summary of benefits. And then I also give him this little summary that I kind of made myself. And it just goes over your current coverage. And it's just the little highlights and the, you know, the main reminders of what we did so that they don't have to go sifting through you know, that packet to understand what we did today. And they have the highlights right there. And then I throw a date on it and I sign it on that bottom line. <clears throat> OK, so door knocking. Door knocking is really fun. And uh, I think it's utter underutilized. Out of my, I think it's like 650 clients, uh, believe it or not, half of them are from door knocks. Yeah. And y if you guys are in the group chat, you know, I'll have days where I didn't have anything planned that day. I woke up at like 10 in the morning. I started, you know, I got out of my house at like 12. And between 12 and 7 that night, I wrote like four or five apps just, for, just from door knocking. It's because I have everything situated in a zip code, and uh, they filled it out by hand. What do you want me to say? They, everybody needs help, and some people are you know, willing to talk to you. Some aren't, but that's okay. The cool thing about door knock is that you're never late. 
a lot less anxiety. I could take my time. Gas station, no big deal. It's always an adventure, all right? Now, how many are tally sale agents in here? I got no disrespect for tally sale agents. I just want to say that. It's really freaking hard. OK. Yeah, I do everything in person. So it's always an adventure, especially with the lower income. It's like never the same day twice. Uh, one thing that I realized about door knocking that I didn't realize and nobody ever trained me on was that I have really, 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 really good retention. And that's because they're not picking up the phone or anybody. And the main people that I door knock are people that didn't pick up the phone. So Janae will go through all the leads and she'll hit them really hard that week. She'll dial four or five days in a row. She'll double, triple dial them multiple days, multiple times per day. If they don't pick up, well, I still got them sorted zip code, I have them ready for me. So yeah, the better retention. So I'll door knock after she goes through uh, the first round of calls. And also I supplement and fill up the gaps when I do have appointments or if I get no showed. So after one year of doing this, I put about 650 clients on the books. That's $16,250 per month in renewals. In the first year commission, for me, that was about 130 grand. I also cross sold some Heartland. I also cross sold some Heartland. I did around, I think, eight or 9,000 so far this year uh, with Heartland. And I did another 55,000 uh, with final expense issue paid. I had virtually no lead cost because we went over the numbers before because of the bonuses, HRA. And with the Sunfire, it's going to be even more rad. Believe it or not, I swear, swear on both my parents' life, I've not dialed the phone once to set an appointment in 2022. Not a single time. I've done plenty of dials before that, primarily doing uh, final expense on my prior FMO. But yeah, I haven't done a single dial here. Dial here. And this is the thing that uh, proud is a hard word, but I'm very proud of it. I didn't sacrifice my entire life. I still hit the gym, I had a girlfriend, we had a dog, I had friends, I had a social life, I ate really well, I still traveled, I still went on vacation, I still kept in touch with my parents, I didn't have to throw away all the other aspects of my life. I had to sacrifice you know, 50 hours, 60 hours a week, but it wasn't my entire life. It won't have to be your entire life for you guys either. things that I didn't cover in this presentation. This presentation was how to write 600 clients in a year. I didn't cover CRM, all right? That's bookkeeping, keeping track of everybody. I didn't cover retention, following up with people. I didn't, call, I didn't cover an answering service. How do you field your calls for current clients and how do you determine that workflow? I didn't cover cross-selling. I didn't cover referrals. But if you have any questions on those, let me know and we have a Q&A later. This is my contact, all right? Email me, I'm not gonna give you my phone number, but email me, agentevan007, because I'm freaking James Bond. If you want the link to this PowerPoint, I'll give it to you. And I have like four cameras recording, so there's gonna be some sort of video going on here and maybe on YouTube. And if you wanna learn more about me speaking at high schools and universities, introducing young adults to meditation. Go to my website, evanmcguffey.com. Are you going to trade in the Tesla for the Aston Martin? Rolls Royce. For sure. But that's a good, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. OK. I told you I'd give you a little bit of time for questions. Questiones. Preguntas. How about this? Give me a round of applause. <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask. Matt is your Wikipedia on that. Uh, sort of. I'll just say this. It's an extra bonus above and beyond what Evan just spoke about. 
and, and it's, it's not all organizations, not all, or, all organizations will have access to it. Uh, we are one of the few that do have it. Uh, we've earned the right to get it. We all have uh, by producing such large numbers in such short time. Uh, but it's an extra 40 to $90 per application that you uh, submit through Sunfire. And I wish Luis was here, because he knows more than I about it. But it's just an extra 40 to $90 for every application you submit through Sunfire and you get them connected with uh, one of the networks. Well, yeah, there's it, it ranges from 40 to $90. So $40 is where basically Sunfire just takes the lead, right? They just take the client's information and they're able to market uh, like non uh, non health related products. 90, Not, is, 90 is a live transfer. Yeah, you could get 90 bucks if you're client. But listen, if you're in, per I don't want to speak for you guys, but if you're in person and you're with, if I'm with Jim, I mean, I want to shake your hand and leave and you know, land it on like a, like a solid ground. I don't want to like put you on a live transfer and dip, you know? So I'll just take the 40 bucks and you can get it. Yeah. Is that the VBC lead that yes. we talked about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And value-based care. Yeah. Okay. And then another question for you. Can I get your think on telesales? You said it's hard. You have respect for it, though. It's something I had been considering. I haven't written anything yet. Uh, love that you don't make any dials, so you did it at least in 2022 uh, with the help of the equipment center. Um, have you done any telesales at all also as a part of that question? I have, yeah. Now with Medicare, with final expense, okay. yeah. I tried telesales for, why is it doing that? I tried telesales for about a month. It was actually last September, and I want to rip my freaking hair out, man. It was cool for like two days, because like, oh yeah, I'll just go to the office. I don't have to go pound the pavement, knocking on, or going to appointments. But um, yeah, it just wasn't for me. And it's really hard, and that's why anybody that's good at uh, telesales, I really admire. Something I, I can't say, you know, can't is a strong word, Slide to the left. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't want to say I can't do it, but it's just everybody has their assets. Some people like sitting in a room all day under fluorescent light, just talking to people on the phone. I'm just not one of those people. I like the adventure part of it. We've got to have some sort of fun. It's less fun. Can you give us like a door knock example? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does anybody have an actual lead? Anybody have a printed lead? Okay. All right, so to, like, let's just pretend that this is a printed lead. So they filled out the postcard of the mail, they sent it back, need a lead, insurance marketing hub, they sent it to me via email or in my back office, I printed it, and it's up here. Kelly, right? Yes. Okay. So knock, knock, knock. Hey, what's going on? Okay. Kelly opens the door. Hey Kelly, my name's Evan. Just getting back to you about this postcard that you had gotten in the mail. Uh, you had filled it out and sent it back on the uh, right hand side. Yeah, I mean, Is that your handwriting yeah, over there? Yeah. Now sometimes they say no, right? <laughs> and it's their, it's their daughter, the granddaughter, son, you know? True. So, you know, that's why I like to verify and then I'm shit out of luck at that point, but <laughs> no, I'm still okay. But uh, this is your handwriting, right? 99 times out of, yeah. That's it. Okay, cool. Well, listen, and then sometimes you're probably looking at it for a longer time, you're like, God darn, when did I fill that out? I'm like, okay, well, listen, this was to see if you qualify for uh, extra money back and to learn about the Medicare Savings Program to get that 170 back per month. And that's the reason that most people fill it out. Nobody from my office was able to reach it by telephone, so they just had me follow up with everybody that fills it out. It would take me about five, 10 minutes for me to go over it with you. And I go inside. That's it, that's it. Anybody know what a sales vacuum is? Raise your hand if you know what a sales vacuum is. A sales vacuum. So now it doesn't clean the freaking carpet. It's a vacuum in conversation, and it's kind of like an awkward pause, but it's not awkward for you because you're intentionally doing it. But it's awkward for the other person, so they're like, oh, all right, yeah, come in. Or when I would do final expense, I'd do three options, and I'd be like A, B, C, and C, I'd be like, yeah, you could do 30000 for $100 per month. It's the last thing I would say. No closing line. That's it. Vacuum. 
And Jim is going to be first one to talk loses. You got that from me. <laughs> no, that's what I teach my agents. First one to talk loses. So hey, it would take about five, ten minutes for me to go over it with you. Pause, pause, pause. Okay, yeah, come on in. Happens every single time. Any other questions? What's up? Your appointment center. Yeah. Is she independent? She's independent. Yeah. I never met her. I've only spoken to her on the phone for like five minutes. Uh, referral from another agent when I was doing final expense. Okay. Yeah. And, I mean, I would imagine, does she, does she have people working with her to help set all the appointments? Or is she She's solo. solo. Believe it or not, she has, I think, like a dozen agents that she works for. So she just does appointments all day long. She's just on the phone. Yep. yep. Yeah, she won't set you appointments during the weekend. Cool. All right. I'm getting the hook. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you.